Добрый вечер, мои товарищи. Добрый пожаловать. Всем привет. Guys, um, good evening and welcome and hello all. Listen, uh, I just, I'm, I want to keep the intro short. I want you to have a listen to this guy who I'm giving the award of piece of shit of the year to. Um, this um, monstrosity, his name is Dave Debatos and uh, he tries to defecate on my comrade uh, Stas and uh, award him his um, worthless um, title of scumbag of the month or the week. Scumbag of the week. And I'm giving this guy a piece of shit of the year um, for, for his epic little rant. Uh, he's a little weasel, little rough feature. Um, He's a proper star-spangled Yankee doodler who's got everything arse about face. Hey, he's got it all twisted and uh, he tries to defecate on my uh, my comrade Stas' uh, character. But I listened to his, I listened to three quarters of his nonsense and I said, look, look I've had enough. I'm going to post my own retort. So here goes, um, listen to what this the bat guy has to say. And then listen to uh, you can listen to my retort. So um, yeah, be prepared for a bit of a long video here. Uh, I I might play at a, a, a pitched up speed just to make it a little shorter. And um, so apologies that it's a long one, but you will see why uh, I get so vexed when this as this guy gets into his fucking nonsense ramble and. Uh, David DeBettos, uh, congratulations on your award of piece of shit of the year. You star-spangled Yankee doodle and fucking nuts. Congratulations. Uh, guys, um, have a listen and uh, let's go over. Welcome to the No Delusion Zone. I'm David DeBotto. This week is a new episode of a new podcast series, Scumbag of the Week. And the um, the competition was fierce. This week, I'll have to admit, many, many worthy competitors. But uh, to me, one stood out way above all the rest. Uh, and it was a tight race, but I think he earned it. So without further ado, let me let me introduce to you the scumbag, scumbag of, of the, the week. week. And that would be Stanislav Krabivnik. Stanislav Krabivnik is a former U.S. Army officer. Armor. Served in the U.S. Army as a commissioned officer and um, resigns in the 1990s and went to Russia. I would say that he defected to Russia because since then, he's been nothing but a Kremlin propagandist. He hates America. He hates the West in general, hates democracy, loves Putin, loves everything about dictatorship and what's going on in Russia. Uh, and he's just a real piece of work. Uh, why is he the scumbag of the week? Well, there could be many reasons, actually. He uh, checks all the boxes, but the reason he is the, the winner this week is because of some statements he made on RT, Russian TV, uh, this week, as well as some other um, Russian pundits, podcasts, uh, and some TV interviews. And basically, old uh, Pavarish Krabivnik said that since Ukraine had the audacity, the gall, the nerve to defend themselves and enter into Russian territory and actually attack Russian forces in Russia in response to Russian forces systematically killing tens of thousands of Ukrainians over the border in eastern Ukraine, since the Ukrainians had the temerity to do this, and to go on to Russian soil, that the West, specifically America, should be nuked. Hell yeah. Uh, that's nothing new. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Putin says this all the time. Medvedev says this all the time. All the, uh, the Russian uh, uh, kiss asses uh, and propagandists say this all the time. Um, but then he was pretty specific with this. Uh, let me just read some brief quotes. He said in relation to the Ukrainian incursion into 
Russia, and specifically about the possibility that they may be attacking and taking over the, uh, the nuclear plant just outside of the city of Kursk, in the Kursk Oblast, he said, this is a direct provocation that warrants wiping Kiev, Kiev off the face of the earth. This effectively crosses the lines of tactical nukes. This is open war. And in response, an American city must be wiped off the face of the earth. Or there will be a strike in London based on who armed it, Trabivnik said, suggesting that there will be an explosion and New York will be gone. Washington will be next. There's other more, but I don't want to read it. Um, you know, he's the scumbag of the week and he deserves it. Here was a, a man who came to America. Russian born, came to America, uh, took advantage of what America had to offer, became a commissioned officer in the United States Army, getting paid about 10 gazillion times more than he ever would if he even became a general in the, the decrepit, useless Russian army. God knows what other benefits he sucked up here while he was in America that he couldn't have dreamed of, of getting in Russia. Defex goes back to Russia, and what does he do? He badmouths America and the West every minute he gets, every opportunity that comes up. He talks about nuking the West, specifically America. I don't know. Uh, he was treated too well here, I guess. Too much democracy shoved down his throat uh, that he he uh, feels that he has to have some payback. Uh, it, it, it's just it's just really tragic. You know, a close second, a close second to old uh, Stanislav here. And I'm going to take some heat over this from people that uh, that I respect, but it's too bad. A close second to the uh, the award for scumbag of the week this week are the Russian people. Why do I say that? Because like many, many Americans and, and those in the West and Ukraine, I have been watching too many videos of, of Russian people and their responses, not just to the Kursk uh, um how can I say this, action by the Ukrainian army, but just in general about the war in Ukraine, uh, saying unprompted things that they don't have to say. Uh, when a Russian person is interviewed, they can say, I have no comment. Uh, I'm not political. Uh, I'm tired of talking about the special military operation or even uh, I I'm all for it, but I have nothing to say. I mean, it, it, as neutral as they can be, they don't have to gush. They don't have to come right out and talk about how much they love atrocities, how much they love seeing Ukrainian cities, schools, maternity wards, museums, and apartment buildings go up in flames. They don't have to uh, have joy and, and take pleasure in seeing corpses of Ukrainian men, women, and children on videos and, and saying how they deserve it. They don't have to say that, but many of them do. And why am I saying that now? Because yes, uh, it's an obvious reaction to the residents of, of the Kursk Oblast to be angry who, at who's ever bombing you, shelling you, shooting at you, trying to, to destroy your, your, your community. I get that. But not one of them, at least not any of them that I've seen on video or read any reports about, uh, think about, hmm, why are they attacking us? Um, mm, I, I need to think about why would the Ukrainians just come over the border and start shooting at innocent us? They don't do that. I haven't seen any of them do that. Uh, and in fact, what I have seen is, again, the old propaganda of calling the, the, the Ukrainians fascists, Nazis, uh, uh, genocidal maniacs, murderers, uh, just all the typical Russian propaganda points. Uh, and, and not one of them, not that I've seen again, is angry at the government, angry at Putin. Ah, they're angry at Putin because he didn't provide uh, uh, transportation. He didn't provide evacuation out of uh, the area from the Ukrainians, but not about what caused it. Not the fact that old Vladimir is the reason that they're being shelled. He did, nobody's saying anything about this. So I could go on and on about this. I'm not. But the Russian people are a close second this week to scumbags of the week. I'm just I've had it. I've had it. I really have. And, you know, just like the good Germans in World War II, it seems. And again, a lot of people are going to uh, say uh, bad things about me about this. But it seems that the only way that we're going to get out of this, the West, uh, is by the total defeat of Russia. Total defeat. And that includes crippling their economy to the point where they're eating out of garbage cans. And, and many of them are going to have to die. I'm sorry. The, these, these vicious people who take joy in genocide 
don't deserve to exist. Russia as it is right now, not everyone, the Russian community, the nation of Russia today, in my opinion, doesn't deserve to exist there. It has to radically change. And if that has to be at the point of a gun, so be it. That's it for this edition of the No Delusion Zone and the Scumbag of the Week. Hope you enjoyed it. Some of you will, some of you won't. And so I, <laughs> I think I look forward to your comments, but we shall see. As always, stay safe, take care, and please stay sane. Dobre vicha, my tavarish. Dobre pojalovic. Shem privet, guys. Welcome. And this is this is a touch of class here. I just stumbled across this um, scumbag named Dave DeBatos. Uh, he runs this uh, podcast called The No Delusion Zone, but it, it seems like um, the Ultra Delusional Zone. And uh, the, this particular episode was um, basically he was just dumping Fakali all over my, uh, my boy Stas. That's uh, Stanislav, Stanislav Krapivnik. Uh, who spent a long time in the States, served in the military there, and uh, obviously decided he'd had enough of the States, and uh, returned back home. Um, so this boy is calling him scumbag of the week, because uh, he, he had certain views on um, uh, what, the, what, what the dirty Banderas tactics um, uh, that were taking place in um, the conflict zones in Ukraine and inside Russia proper uh, in the Kursk region where um, NATO were um, using their proxy puppets, uh, the Banderists, to orchestrate uh, like a campaign of terror there and sabotage nuclear power plants. So they tried it on the, on the Kursk plant and they tried it on the Zaporozhye MPP and so far Thank God all efforts by these Banderists and their NATO, uh, NATO puppet masters have failed. Um, but it, it's not for want, it's not for lack of trying. Uh, it's just that the Russian military have been so successful in, in fending them off. Um, yeah, this guy tries to make out that uh, um, Stas is a hater of democracy and he's a defector. Somebody wants to return home, uh, it doesn't make them a defector. I mean, if I was living in the States um, from, say, the 1980s up to uh, um, the early 2020s, um, I would I would have, you know, I'd, I'd emigrated there. I'd have said, no, enough is enough. I'm gone out of here. I don't think I'd have lasted that long. America, land of free democracy, you know. And you're dropping bombs and uh, <laughs> on every regime that doesn't what well, you class as a regime that doesn't fall into line with your um, uh, sort of uh, Zionistic view of the world, your hegemonic view. You know everybody needs to snap into line with the Star Spangled Yankee Doodlers. Uh, no thanks. So Stas is very correct in um, in the opinions that he was putting out when he went on RT and other. Uh, uh, platforms um, by saying the guys who are supplying these weapons and uh, given given the green light for said weapons to be used inside Russia proper and or uh, um, and to be used against NPPs uh, knowing that the fallout would cause devastation um, either depending on which way the wind blows it would it would really be it would really be both uh, um, Western Europe and Eastern Europe slash uh, um, Russia. We know Russia straddles two continents, so um, there's a lot of a lot of area would suffer uh, if the West were to green light that. And we know they they have green lighted it. I have no doubt that the West already uh, the Biden admin um, and the Zionistic overlords. The military industrial complex shadow government etc etc had already green lighted uh you know every terroristic action 
that the Banderas had been perpetrating and and the Mercs that were involved there. So um, I'm not going to condemn uh, Stas for what he said um, because I think he's absolutely correct. Uh, my, my first instinct as the leader of, if I was, uh, say I was to put, obviously I'm not Putin. Um, I'm nowhere near the man he, that he is. Uh, the guy is so patriotic. He's a he's a chess grandmaster, and I mean that in a in a strategic sense. That uh, I personally would have probably already used nukes. Um, it, it's it sounds beyond the pale that you can say something like that, knowing the devastation that they cause. But if you back me into a corner and I'm a wounded animal, um, I come out scrapping like like my life depends on it and that's like uh, russia is fighting like their life depends on it because that's what the rand corporation documents uh, stated what they want wanted regime change they wanted to bleed russia isolate it contain it uh so chaos um steal its resource get its hands on its resources etc etc it hasn't worked out for them so now they've resorted and the United States and the Western powers are in a free fall. They're in the death throes now. So basically they are, well, let's see if Trump is actually going to, going to call time out on, on this sort of, uh, this mass murder that's going on in the world at the moment with, with war and factions. And let's see, um, uh, if these sort of terror, if somebody will say, Listen, get into line here. We're not going to put up with your terroristic nonsense, uh, like um, uh, causing explosions at NPPs and putting uh, entire continents at risk. Do I think Trump is going to? Uh, I I don't know. Like the 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 jury's out on that. Do I blame Stas for what he said? No, I don't. I would have my submarines parked off. Uh, the Florida coast with you know um serious serious firepower ready to hit all of the big sites in America and uh, um our friends across across the pond and everybody else that's been involved in backing these banderists and supplying them with arms, basically uh, the entire the entirety of NATO, all the capitals of the world, and um, they would they would deserve they you reap what you sow, and uh, Stas was only highlighting that, you know what I mean? Um, so this this uh, kind of insinuation that he's a hater of democracy and freedom, fuck right off out of it. Your country is a is a, a cesspool at the moment. And is anything but a democracy. Um, the elections, the last few elections in in, in the states have shown that um, two cheeks of the same ours, the same as my country is, and uh, uh, you've got APAC controlling things, um, and uh, these Zionist entities uh, running the show um, just for greed, just for the lust of power. And money and um, control it's very sickening so uh, what's that? Nazdarovia um, my tavarish and uh, I commend you for taking a stand and uh, this guy I'm nominating him for the piece of shit of the year Dave Debatos um, you're a fucking clown uh, trying to say talking about uh, the Russian Federation as the invaders you guys and your, your Pentagon think tank namely Rand came out with the extending uh, Russia competing from advantageous ground documents um, which was a declaration of war on Russia so fuck away out of it and uh, I hope you die screaming in hell where you belong you fucking piece of shit of the year Congrats on the award. <laughs>